Okay, let's welcome Abhishek. So hello everyone, my name is Denis Kontratenko. I'm working in SUSE uh, for storage product that is actually based on Ceph. And today we will talk about the Ceph and the Yelk. Uh, we'll talk about it from the different perspective, not like we are going to run Yelk on Ceph, but how Yelk could help us with Ceph a little bit. And uh, probably you everyone know what is the Elasticsearch is, what is Logstash Kibana, that is stack of uh, different uh, products from the Elastic. Elasticsearch is basically the database. Logstash is server pipeline that actually allows you to get data, transform it somehow, and to put it probably in Elasticsearch. That's what they claim. They all, you, and also Kibana is the GUI for all this, so you can query from it to Elasticsearch, monitor something, and etc. XPEC, it's actually another uh, product that's provides you machine learning and alerting from same Elasticsearch database. Uh, what I'm be talking about is login. logging. So uh, you actually everyone knows that uh, Ceph is cluster solution and we have a lot of logs that we need to gather somehow, put it somehow in database and alert the people uh, that there are some problems, so just analyze it. So how you can collect it, it's actually well known, uh, old, uh, Technology is rcslog, syslog, ng. You can just gather it on the node and push it to the elastic search. As well as they have also file bit. It's special applications that runs on the node. You can run it that will not just gather the logs, but also preprocess them. As well as Greylog, Ceph actually has the built-in Greylog support. So Ceph itself could forward the logs where you want. For that, you just need to configure it somehow. Why we need the logs? We need logs to store it for later use, for analyze, like analyzing it to understand if there are some problems happens, crash happens, you just could alert immediately uh, someone. And uh, you also can analyze those logs with machine learning, and that's built in in, the, in Elastic in XPAC. And as well as Elasticsearch has a good client for R. So that's that's how you can explore those logs. And yeah, for sure, when the cluster is dead or some node is dead, then you get, as the developer, sleep of the logs and you need to analyze them. So you can forward those logs, as I said, with rcslog. Uh, rcslog has a built-in functionality. You can just configure it so it will uh, run uh, those logs in uh, gray log to the server. And uh, logstash, Excel, it's why actually I'm talking about Elasticsearch and Logstash because it's really simple framework with a lot of build functionality. So it's already could parse those logs like sys logs, like gray logs, it's already built in. So you do not need to, to do something for that. As well as they have file bit that could collect information for you and push it to some server. Uh, Ceph uh, gray log support. So it's built in, it's not really documented, uh, but uh, you can find these parameters in the Ceph itself <laughs> and it works. At least uh, for me it was working fine. But uh, so you just need to configure those parameters, uh, restart the Ceph service one by one for sure you want that. And uh, for example, he, we are using uh, the DeepC, that's salt based configuration management, so you can run one command and that's everything you need to do and then Ceph will forward those logs to Greylog server and in my case this Logstash for example and Logstash could collect this log and push it forward to the Elastic search. So as I said the Logstash already provides some primitives for that but you could not just parse, uh, not, not just push it to Logstash but also preprocesses for example you can find some fields and that's easy to do with grog patterns. It's just the regular expressions that you can use that will preprocess your logs and, I don't know, just push uh, a little bit more information into the database or just used for alerting. There are a couple of examples. These slides are available in the link uh, under our talks, so you can go ahead and look uh, on examples. How this, uh, this is Logstash pipeline. It's like filter part of it that actually parses Ceph logs. It's like uh, two, 
two lines of the regular expression that sexually parse all the SF logs. So we have two different formats in SF <laughs> somehow. <coughs> and uh, these two lines as example how to parse it. So it's just some timestamps, some uh, uh, fields from the logs like uh, thread, and etc., etc., etc. So to actually, as a developer, you probably need to have some development uh, Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, it's really easy to deploy in the Docker, and I used Docker Compose. It's just like a couple of YAM, it's one YAML file where you define your cluster, you push Docker Compose up, and it brings up like two, three nodes cluster with Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, Kibana. So this is example. It's really pretty straightforward and easy to use for development. So I can advise you to use Docker Compose for that, for development purpose. And why we want to do that, it's actually gather it together in some interface and actually expose this interface to the user uh, so they can find out something. Myself, I see the use of this tool uh, for sure for the, some troubleshooting. Like you have the logs, you are level two, level three engineer, maybe developer, and you have dashboard that actually queries Elasticsearch for some known pro problems, for example, or some hints that you can see the picture uh, of it uh, just on the screen that just will speed up your development or your troubleshoot analyzing or whatever it's maybe will say you in future what kind of problem you have. So uh, Kibana has uh, built-in functionality for dashboards, for querying the Elasticsearch database, so you can actually easy to do that. So there is one example. Uh, we have uh, support config. Uh, that's special uh, tool that we, that our level two, level three engineers use f to gather the logs from the cluster. Like it's, they run it node by node, and then send it to us as developers, saying like here is some problem. And actually, as a database already prepared, you can build like cluster picture here. In the example, we have like how many nodes we see in the logs what is the kernel version, what is the Ceph version, and what kind of problem here, here is like just a simple query for health, not okay, like health warn or health error. So that's actually give you some idea of, uh, some idea of the current issues on the cluster, as well as you can use simple searches then for, for the database to see uh, actually what happens in the cluster. So my idea may be that uh, we can have some patterns and defined some searches and queries defined that could say you as a developer or support engineer what happens, what's wrong, what maybe the basic issues like here in this example is like Radha's gateway cannot find the key I believe. Yeah, that, that's like this failure to start the Radha's gateway service. And uh, if we will have such uh, list of patterns we can parse, we actually can uh, quickly and more more quickly actually find out the issues or the the state of the cluster. For sure, you can use the Elasticsearch uh, real time and uh, discover some of the problems as well. So that was my part about the Elasticsearch. Uh, Parsing log stash and uh, of parsing the logs, and right now I uh, give the microphone to Abhishek. He will uh, say a little bit about different approach, what how we can use Elasticsearch more. Um, can you hear me at the back? Uh, Okay, can you hear me at the back now? No, it's microphone is not working, it's just for... Okay, okay. Um, so I'm here to talk about the reduce gateway, the object storage component of Ceph and how it actually ties into Elasticsearch. So um, a bit about Rados gateway. So it, this is the object storage client to the Ceph cluster. Um, by client, I mean it's a lib Rados client to the Ceph cluster, so it basically translates your um, HTTP um, request to Librados requests, and um, Librados does all the intelligent placing of data and um, 
based on your storage policies and everything like that. So, yeah, it's basically a RESTful API access. It provides you a RESTful API access to the um, Ceph cluster. Um, and Kai already explained about Ceph cluster in his open attic, uh, so I'm not covering more about what is the general architecture of Ceph or anything. Um, and uh, we provide basically both Swift and S3 API um, access to the Ceph cluster. This is primarily because like most of the um, client tooling for object storage is already built around these two APIs, which are like very well known. So it makes sense that we actually expose these APIs rather than some of our own APIs to access object storage. So since there's already a heavy eco ecosystem of this client tooling, we just reuse the S3 and the Swift API, and um, most of the clients are happy with that. And uh, we have these concepts of user accounts, buckets, ACLs, and everything, which are similar to the Swift and the S3 concepts of uh, these. Um, we support a lot of S3-like features, and uh, we have uh, cross access with S3 and Swift. But the thing is, like, uh, since both the semantics of both the APIs are completely different with some of these uh, uh, protocols, it's like um, you cannot actually upload an object with multipart in Swift and not access it in S3. So you have a lot of history-like features like multi-part uploads, object versioning. Um, you can download the object as a torrent. Um, you have some lifecycle policies which allow you to delete or expire objects. <laughs> then um, you have support for encryption. Um, there is some compression support from Luminous release of Ceph. Um, you can actually ho host a website with uh, static websites. And now we actually support metadata search with Elasticsearch. Um, from the jewel release of Ceph, we have this concept of uh, multi-site, which is basically geographically redundant Ceph cluster. So you can actually replicate your Ceph cluster um, geographically to another um, remote location and you know basically transfer your S3 data. So that is the concept which this is built on. So Elasticsearch, um, as uh, Dennis already explained, it's just a um, distributed, horizontally scalable um, document search engine built on Apache Lucene. So it basically sp uh, speaks uh, a RESTful API, and literally every configuration you do on Elasticsearch is done via REST. So it's pretty easy configuration. Um, and uh, the motivation behind why we need to build something like metadata search of uh, Redux gateway objects with Elasticsearch is basically that you already have a lot of metadata associated with your objects. So for example, if you're doing video analysis, um, then you may actually have uh, a tag saying like this video is uploaded by this author or this user or something like that. And you might want to actually query and find out you know, how many videos are uploaded by, for example, Dreamscape with what average sizes or something like that. And since it's an object storage, you do not have any uh, traditional file system or analysis tools at your disposal. Um, we have some support for this in terms of Rados Gateway admin API. So um, you can actually get specific metadata when you query for it, but the problem is since it's very specific, like if you ask um, for this specific bucket or this specific object, I need metadata, then we'll give it to you, but that doesn't um, lend itself very well for analysis. Um, and you actually have no notifications when you have like uh, new objects or new buckets or new accounts being created, so you have to constantly poll and um, write a very um, large-scale system to actually you know, analyze this. So this is where you know Elasticsearch already comes in because um, it has already built-in primitives for you know uh, slicing and analyzing data, um, and permissions for users to access an admin API is also tricky with the existing API because it's only meant for administrator, and it gives you full access to all the metadata. So as a storage administrator, you want to actually analyze you know what are my top ten consumers of the object storage, or what are my um, really hot buckets, or how is my uh, object storage being used on Friday evenings, for example. And all this is something that's very trivial to be done with Elasticsearch. So uh, the design, it's actually built on top of the multi-site architecture. So in um, multi-site architecture, what we actually implemented is that you have two Ceph clusters and um, two Redux gateway Ceph clusters, and you are basically translating the object uh, uploaded here onto another remote site. So you have already semantics for asynchronously basically copying data from this cluster to the other one. So since that is already there, um, and Rados Gateway is the consumer on the remote site, we actually thought that we can actually leverage this to 
uh, consume it not only by a, by a Redux gateway, but for a third party plugin which can actually forward this uh, metadata and data to an external tier. So um, what we have already built in is like uh, Elasticsearch for, from Kraken release of Ceph, which is basically that uh, we have the metadata already, um, notifications from the remote site, so you just forward it to the Elasticsearch. And the same concept can be actually used to build uh, backup solutions on top of uh, uh, multi-site. So you can actually have a plugin to sync uh, objects from your Ceph cluster onto Amazon Glacier, for example, or Amazon S3. And you can even, for example, write a custom you know, uh, sync plugin that would actually sync your object data to a tape because it might have a custom you know, semantic to actually you know, write an object to a tape. And you know you can build something like Amazon Glacier because now this is actually possible because you actually know that you know there are notifications when objects are uploaded and you know how to pull the object from a remote site. So this is uh, the concept on which you know the Elasticsearch plugin was actually built. So essentially, you already have the metadata from the remote site and you just forward it to the Elasticsearch instance. And uh, what you have is a remote Redux gateway that is just purely. Uh, a forwarder proxy of sorts that actually pulls data from the um, original Ceph cluster and just forwards it to the Elasticsearch. Um, there are some problems with this. You do not have a off-the-shelf authentication module that can work with Elasticsearch and Redux Gateway users. Um, and you really do not want to expose your Elasticsearch endpoint to the public because you know it, if you actually have um, information about your object metadata, then that will tell you almost everything about your storage. So. You don't want to expose this in public. Um, so what we built from Luminous release of Ceph is like for normal users, RGW itself can actually authenticate the end user. And um, you know, actually for an end user who is a user of object storage, he can also use the power of Elasticsearch to analyze his own user account and object metadata. Um, so in the object metadata, we already have an attribute for the owner of the object, and that's how we actually uh, authenticate and make sure that the user only sees his own data. Um, and we also have support for custom metadata fields being indexed um, in terms of Elasticsearch fields. So you can actually not just do the basic text attribute, but you can do dates and other kind of attributes. So this is like a very trivial diagram of this architecture. So you have a primary Redux gateway and the primary Ceph cluster, that's your uh, normal regular storage cluster. And then you actually configure a remote zone um, and the RGW that only reads metadata from this primary cluster. Uh, this can be in the same cl Ceph cluster or a different Ceph cluster. Um, we, I'll recommend a different Ceph cluster if you want to be you know, uh, completely redundant and not depend on your primary data store. And then um, you just forward it to the, I mean, this uh, Radius gateway basically forwards the metadata to the Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, and this is actually uh, um, not just applicable for a single uh, primary Ceph cluster. You can actually have a ring of, you know, three or four Ceph clusters like Amazon, US East, and US West, and the Europe Central region, and forward all these metadata to a single Elasticsearch uh, cluster. Um, this is the, like the example JSON of the metadata we currently um, forward to um, like Elasticsearch. So you basically have the name of the bucket and uh, the name of the object um, and your object versioning and um, the owner attribute. Um, you also have some, uh, basically the metadata which uh, tells you about the size of the object and the time it was upload, uploaded. and. Um, even if you actually, I mean, from last release of Ceph, we also have support for uh, object tagging. So you can actually attribute per custom metadata per object. So you can say like this key and this value are associated with this object, which is very useful when you want to, you know, um, slice your data based on a key. For example, you need all the uh, videos by this author or all the books written by an author or something like this. Um, and um, since it's Elasticsearch, you can aggregate queries pretty easily. Um, you can just give an average of the total objects uploaded, or you can even do it on a date basis and something like this. Um, and the Elasticsearch will respond to you telling this is the total average. You had total 22 objects, and the total size was like 177 bytes. Um, and uh, you can actually have uh, queries on specific metadata content, which can actually help in you know finding out data from specific users or something like that. Um, 
then this is the future work in place. So we right now have support from uh, Elasticsearch up to 6 for Rados Gateway. So the future work is to support Elasticsearch 6. Uh, then uh, custom metadata fields for object tagging, which we do not have support for right now. Um, then the next work is for the plugin to actually analyze uh, common system faults, the Logstash plugin, and integration onto Ceph dashboard and analysis with, you know, for example, machine learning, which Elasticsearch provides, or something like that. Um, so the support config is a repo for what Dennis demonstrated with the Docker and everything. Um, and these are the official Ceph repos and the IRC links and everything like that. Um, and questions. How many minutes do we have? Five minutes. Yes? So do you have any experience with a larger clusters on these metadata uh, stuff? So how big are your clusters and how many data you have tested? Uh, so the question was, do we have um, any data on very large Ceph clusters and Elasticsearch? Um, answer is not really. We do not have any customer data right now on um, um, Elasticsearch. But the uh, answer is like uh, we actually do not, um, I mean, we are not dependent on um, this uh, primary Ceph cluster at all for the metadata. This is completely, you know, asynchronously mirroring data. So it's not, I mean, it's not real time that your metadata is actually there in Elasticsearch. There might be a delay, but it's not um, affecting your primary cluster at all in terms of your IOP or the, uh, metadata path or any sort of uh, path. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.